Hello everyone, I am Priyanka and in this lecture from today onwards we are going to discuss economy for the MPSC, Rajya Seva, Prelims and Mains, okay, in the English medium. So, as you have decided to prepare for the exam, you must have learned, the, you must have gone through the syllabus, okay, or you must have gone through the process of examination, right. For getting into the civil services to the MPSC, MPSC Rajya Seva, we have to give the examination called MPSC Rajya Seva examination. Okay. This examination has three stages. This examination has three stages, right? First one is the Rajya Seva prelims. Okay. Second one is the Rajya Seva mains and the last phase of the examination is the interview, right? Prelimination test or prelimination exam is the qualification exam, right? Once you have qualified the prelims, then you will write the mains. The marks of the mains examination will be calculated while deciding your rank, right? In this examination, okay? I am going to teach you or I am going to teach you the subject called economics. Which subject? Economics. It. Subject is important for the prelims examination as well as the mains examination. In the prelims examination, we get 15 questions out of 100 which are dealing with the section of economy, right? From this 15 question, these are the 15, the biggest chunk or the other, the great amount of weightage is given to economy as a subject. So, we have to learn it. Therefore, we are discussing in the today's lecture, we are discussing the syllabus for the both prelims and the mains and then we will discuss some trend analysis part, okay? Let's start. Let's begin for the first lecture. Right? In the prelims examination, if you have gone through the uh, MPSC gazette notification, you must have gone through the this word economic and social development. This is a tagline for the syllabus for the prelim syllabus in the prelims gazette. Okay, what is it? Economic and social development. So, under under this title, in the prelim section, we have to learn we have to learn different different topics. And what are those topics? We will discuss. Okay. First topic is the sustainable development. Right. First topic is for the economic syllabus is the sustainable development, but before learning the part of sustainable development, we have to learn some basics of economy. Some basics of economy or economics. Not economy. I will tell you the difference between economy and the economics in the later part. Okay. Okay. Basic parts of the economics. What are those? Growth. We have to first of all learn the concept of growth. What is growth? We calculate growth in the section of GDP, gross domestic product. So we have to learn it first of all. Right? Then we will link growth to the development. Growth to the development. Its growth and development go synchronous with each other or growth, growth, only growth happen and the development not happening in the country or the both are going to happen or both are happening. We will discuss all this scenario and later once, you, once we discuss the section of development, we will move to the section of sustainable development. Which section? Sustainable development. The development which is 
development it's actually a long process and we are we are experiencing growth we are experiencing development and that development is the sustainable that development has a social indicator like reducing poverty giving employment that development has the environmental implication obviously which are the good implications like conserving environment so all this part we are going to discuss in the first section called sustainable development this is our first session we will discuss this from the next lecture okay second part is the poverty most important concept and very very important for the examination both prelims and the mains okay this is the syllabus of the prelims when write you okay what is poverty how to define poverty what are those various committees which were established by government of india for determining poverty like rangarajan committee rangarajan committee lakdawala committee what are those all provision what is the below poverty line concept what is the above poverty line concept we all are going to discuss in this scenario then we will discuss cycle how poverty leads to the deprivation of the social aspect how social aspect will impact the poverty we will learn that cycle in this section okay we will learn the types of poverty is it absolute poverty you, you must have gone through this concept absolute poverty or the relative poverty the individual is getting the minimum requirement in the section of food clothes shelter if that person that individual is not getting that minimum requirement which required for the basic standard of living if it is if that person is not getting then that person is the that person is living in the absolute poverty for example individual getting the basic basic necessities of the individual are being fulfilled but there is a lack of quality of education but there is a lack of health health facilities available to that individual there is a lack of skill impartment to that individual this will lead to the relative poverty some section of the society will get benefited and some are not okay this will lead to the relative poverty we will discuss in the poverty right this is the second topic most important topic all the concept of this subject is this topic should get clear to you okay we will discuss the trend analysis then you will realize how important this section okay next topic is the inclusion right inclusion the growth this topic is linked with the first topic this topic is linked with the first topic sustainable development which lead to the inclusion and inclusion lead to the sustainable development how for example 1% 1% has accessibility to the bank that person has accessibility to good educational institution that particular person has accessibility to the health infrastructure okay the person is include the, the development of that person is the inclusive development if this is happening with the one person same can happen with the other person same can happen with the third person same can happen with the whole maharashtra same can happen with the whole india so when we impart when we establish good linkages between financial inclusion social inclusion then the citizen of that country or the resident of that country citizen and resident these are two different concept you will learn it in the policy section this resident of that country will get benefited and which lead to the inclusion when there is a inclusion when the all cities on the all person all the resident of india will grow together the india will prosper which lead to the inclusion of the each and every individual of each and every individual of that country 
obviously this will lead to the increase in the gdp sustainable development and which lead to the reduction of the poverty increasing employment whatever okay this inclusion has many aspect for example i will just tell you one aspect financial inclusion for example you must have gone through the scheme called pradhan mantri awas yojana have you heard about it have you heard about it it is a infrastructural scheme government is providing the housing facilities to the individual who does not have it okay government is providing the housing facilities was the housing or house is provided to the, the poor section of the society the poor strata of the society they will get the they will they need not to fear about the they need not to fear about the rehabilitation they need not they need not excavated from that particular particular place the tension of we don't have household we don't have household this tension will automatically get reduced then that amount that family could could invest in the other section like skills education health etc etc which will lead to the growth of that family growth of that particular individual and obviously the growth of country so in the inclusion sector we have to learn different different schemes like mudra yojana you must have heard about it what is it we will discuss in the subsequent lectures mudra yojana right you must have heard about the kisan credit card we will learn all this scheme in the subsequent lecture okay this include in the section of the inclusion right next part is the again most important part that is the demographic in this section we have to discuss what is the birth rate in india is it increasing it is decreasing okay what is the definition of the birth rate then we have to analyze the death rate how much person okay we have to analyze the death rate why i have written this this is the scenario of it okay then we have to discuss the maternal mortality rate how many mothers died due to, during the child births we have to define it we have to analyze that figure and we have to describe or we have to discuss all these demographic parameter what are this demographic parameter we have to discuss all these demographic parameter obviously this parameter are included in the census okay as of now we have to discuss according to syllabus itself we have to discuss this demographic parameter and after that we have to discuss the 2011 census what was the birth rate of india at that time what was the death rate of india at that time what was the maternal mortality rate of that at that time okay at india level and after that after that we are giving the civil services examination of maharashtra so we have to discuss the demographic parameter or the demographic indicator and the specific values of it regarding to maharashtra regarding to maharashtra right why we have to discuss 2011 census because the census activity the census census activity it happens after every 10 year right it happens after every 10 year it was a pre independence phenomenon right but due to covid due to covid the census activity of 2021 is being postponed for the indefinite period therefore we have to discuss the 2011 census 
when the census activity are being carried out okay we will get the information from the newspaper and after that after one or two year we will get that report so we have to keep an eye we have to keep eye on that report also but as of now we have to discuss the 2011 census right okay i hope this is clear to you right then we will move forward next section of the prelim syllabus is the social sector initiative what are those initiative which are taken by the government of india and some initiative which are taken by the government of maharashtra for the improve for the improvement in the level of education there is a new phenomena in education system for edtech you are listening this lecture making notes out of it to the edtech you are using internet you are using virtual medium of learning so edtech this is a revolution right revolution has taken its pace very faster due to the covid activity right then the reform which are being taken into the education sector for example new education policy of 2020 we have to discuss it okay different different skills different different schemes regarding to education which are introduced by government of india we have to learn those schemes we have to analyze those schemes for example there is a one scheme for sarva shiksha abhiyan there is a one scheme called sarva shiksha abhiyan primary education primary education for the child from the age 6 to 14 is free okay this is included then there is a madhyamik shiksha abhiyan okay then there is a uchchatar shiksha abhiyan these are the scheme run by government of in, government of india then there is a skill called mid day meal skill you must have heard about it mid day meal right what was that skill what is that skill we have to discuss then there is a another scheme called pradhan mantri social yojana what is it why it was introduced by government of india what are the indicator of this scheme what is the output we get through this schemes we have to discuss lot right we will discuss in the our subsequent lecture then this picture is visible to you picture shows that the protection of the woman okay so for the protection or the empowerment of the woman empowerment is the better word for the empowerment of the woman what are the different schemes different provision which are in the curriculum of the government of india are being done we have to discuss that scheme okay. for example there is a one scheme called sukanya samriddhi yojana we have to discuss it then there is a scheme you must have heard about it that scheme is the beti padhao beti bachao beti bachao beti padhao right we have to discuss then another scheme which are for the mothers and that scheme is the pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana we have to discuss it. in short for the protection or the for the empowerment of the woman what are those different different mechanism that being done by the government of india or the india 
the government of Maharashtra, the Maharashtra, we have to discuss it thoroughly. Then again, related to women. Then we have to discuss about the infrastructural activity. You must have seen light here. Okay. So, energy transmission, electricity. We have to discuss about the infrastructural activity, which includes road, housing, railway, aeroplanes, airways. Okay. Udan Yojana, Ude Haradesh Ka Nagri. We have to discuss. Then we have to discuss the infrastructural activity like Pradhan Mantri, Gram Sadak Yojana. There is a National Highway Authority of India. Okay. The, work, the, aim, uh, the work of that institution is to build road. Okay. We have to discuss all those. This is your prelim syllabus. Okay. This is your prelim syllabus. And the weightage of economy, weightage of economy in the prelims is of 15 questions. Each question holds for 2 marks. Around 30 marks. Okay. You have to answer question, question for the 30 marks in the prelims. 30 marks and the deciding marks marks to get into the to write means or to not to write means. We have to learn subject. Okay. There is negative marking also. You must have heard about it. One fourth negative marking. Right. So as of now, I consider I consider the syllabus of the prelim, you must have analyzed it. it. It is okay, it is understandable to you, right? So, now we are going to discuss the syllabus for the men's examination, right? Hello there. General in the men's examination. We have different different papers like paper 1, GS, you have Marathi paper, you have English paper, then you have GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4. Okay, these are the four papers, right? The last paper is the general studies paper 4, or that in the examination row, it is a sixth paper. Okay, last paper. The title of the paper is Economy and Planning, Economics of Development and Agriculture. And the science and technology development. So, this section is dealt by me economy and the planning. The next economics of development and agriculture. This section is also being dealt by me. Okay. This is the science tech part. Okay. It will be dealt by another, another teacher. Okay. What is the syllabus of economics? For the men's examination, we will discuss it thoroughly. We will discuss it thoroughly. Right? First section is the microeconomics. First section is the microeconomics. Right? Microeconomics deal with the concept of GDP, we will learn this concept in the prelim section itself. GDP, GNP, NNP, personal income, etc. etc. Okay. We will learn this section in the basics of economy in that section. Right. GDP, GNP, these are the basic basic concepts which are being dealt in the GS4 syllabus. Right. After that, NNP, right? Personal income. These are the different different concepts which are being dealt. Okay. After that, we will discuss the concept of employment, unemployment, what are the different types of unemployment, etc. They are the section of the microeconomics. 
then there is a next topic called growth and development right this is also overlapping topic with the actually not overlapping topic it is the subsequent that topic growth and development is being built is being built before the sustainable development topic because to learn the development we have to know about the growth we have to know about the relationship between growth and development so in the basics of economy that section will be there okay next is the public finance what is this this is the major topic okay we have to discuss in the mains section what is it have you heard about the budget have you heard about it budget of government of india and the budget of the government of maharashtra is being is being introduced in the parliament or is being introduced in the legislative assembly respectively these are the news which come on the newspaper come in the newspaper right we heard about it so we have to discuss the budget section thoroughly what is the income of government what are the expenditure of the government okay in the budget section we have to discuss i will just give you outline in the budget section the budget this word is not written down in the constitution okay there is an annual financial statement okay which is used in the constitution okay at the place of budget budget we generally speak as a budget okay in the budget section we discuss about the income of the government right income of the government and at the same time we also discuss about the expenditure of the government in the income part what are those different sources from which government is getting money that can be tax that can be non tax it right? so we have to discuss tax revenue non tax revenue in the similar line when we do the expenditure we do expenditure for day to day basis salary that comes on every month pension that comes on every month so that is a day to day expenditure means we have to discuss about the day to day expenditure of the government okay revenue expenditure then we have to deal about the capital expenditure long term expenditure of the government when government is establishing a school for the establishment of the school money is needed at once but the implication of that education in uh, institution should be longitude that we will get the outcome from output from that education the very long period or we will get that output for the long period right so that expenditure come in the capital part this all phenomena this all things we have to discuss in the public finance section of the economy okay important topic some question are being asked in the prelims also we will see in the our next subsequent slides next is the money different types of money m1 m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 okay evolution of the money from the barter system to the digital e rupee okay digital money we have to discuss all these things then the money is the circulation of the money is controlled by the rbi therefore we have to discuss the rbi right the different different operation that are used by rbi to control the money supply in the economy we will discuss it like repo operation you must have heard it in the news we daily we listen about like a repo rate has been increased or repo rate has been decreased by the rbi there is a one committee called monetary policy committee we will discuss all this okay so different different monetary operation which are being done by the rbi we have to discuss in the money section then 
there is another topic called international trade and international capital india bharat we are not living in the isolation right we are not living in the isolation we are not isolated like north korea we do trade we do commerce with the different different countries we do commerce with the china we do commerce with the south korea we do trade trade and commerce with the japan we do trade and commerce with the russia we do trade and commerce with the israel we do trade and commerce with the usa uk germany france brazil south various countries of the south africa like kenya uganda okay? tanzania etc etc sri lanka we do international trade we are not isolated we are maintaining our trade relation with the various countries so we have to see we have to learn about the concept called balance of trade we have to learn about the does we have trade surplus with china or trade deficit with china then what is surplus what is deficit so we have to learn those concepts we will learn in the subsequent lecture not to worry about it then we have to learn about the international capital you must have heard about recently okay recently there was a news regarding the depreciation of the indian rupee regarding the various currencies or specifically dollar when we have to get 1 dollar we have to pay 85 90 80 rupee for that particular dollar it shows ki indian currency is being is getting stronger or indian currency is getting weaker what is that relation what is the concept of depreciation what is the concept of appreciation what is the concept of devaluation we all are going to learn in this subject then to maintain this international capital we have different different organization world trade organization there is another organization called brics we will learn the economic angle of it brics bank new development bank then there is a organization called world bank we learn about it then there is a organization called international monetary okay imf we will learn these things in the international capital okay need not to worry about need not to take load of it we will learn in the subsequent lecture okay it is it is easy not that much difficult then next section of the of our chapter or of our uh, subject is the indian economy we have to learn we have to gather some information which is specific to the indian economy okay economics economy what is this different we will learn that difference too okay But just how face okay how some face okay economics and economy the next section is the indian economy then we have to get overview of the indian economy agriculture section what percent of what percent of the gdp is contributing by agriculture by service by manufacturing how indian economy is evolved since 1950s to the 2023 we have to learn about the planning commission in this okay a question are asked in the prelims also regarding to this okay so we have to learn it then there is another section called indian agriculture rural development and the cooperation thoroughly we have to discuss about the agriculture system and the indian agriculture system. why there is a why there is a why there is a declining trend of the gdp in the agriculture sector okay agriculture sector is contributing around 15 to 16% of the gdp and the employment of people employed in the agriculture around 45 46% why this depreciation okay we have to learn in this then rural development okay for improving the rural development has one important section and that section is the agriculture so these top two topics are the linked topic we have to discuss about it. and then cooperation okay different different cooperative societies are being 
established are being formed at the rural India to improve the status of the rural development. So we have to discuss. Maharashtra has a great history for the corporations. Okay, different different cooperative banks are there, different different cooperative societies are there. So we have to discuss. Maharashtra has a great tradition of the corporation. Then next topic is the monetary and financial sector. Okay. This topic is being dealt in this section only. What are different financial institutions, different financial sectors which are in India, like CDB, okay, like uh, uh, PFR, institution of uh, insurance, institution of pensions, we have to deal about it. And then next is the public finance and the financial institute. This is the extension of this topic, so it is being dealt in this topic only. I hope syllabus is clear to you regarding mains also, regarding mains also, okay. There are some different another topics which are specific to mains syllabus and these topics are the industry and the service sector. Like in the earlier part we have discussed about the agriculture sector, then the another sector which are contributing to the GDP or the giving employment is the industrial sector, industry and then there is a service sector. So we have to discuss then infrastructure development like road development rail development airways development okay sanitation you must have heard about the swachh bharat mission before swachh bharat mission there was another scheme called nirmal bharat mission so we have to discuss all things bridge you must have uh, heard about the concept of monorail metro projects so what are these these are the infrastructural development we have to discuss then international trade and capital, this is the extension of this topic. We will discuss in that section only. Okay. This is the extension, so we will discuss regarding India. So we will discuss in that section only. Again, agree. Importance of agree in the national economy. This section is itself being dealt into, into the this section. Okay, Indian Agriculture, Rural Development, Cooperation, Integrated. Then problem of ruler indebtedness and the accredit agriculture credit. You must have heard about the incidences of farmer suicide. Right? The one reason for the farmer suicide is the indebtedness. Okay. For the bazari pana indebtedness. Okay. One reason, one major reason. They are not getting the financial resources from this state. So that, that financial resources or the institution which provides the, the credit to the farmer are not accessible. Or there is a lack of information regarding the institutional credit to the farmer, to the ground level. So due to this, there, is a, there are instances of the ruler indebtedness which leads to the farmer suicide. So we have to discuss the phenomena of ruler indebtedness. And then agriculture credit. In the prelim section, I have discussed about the Kisan credit card scheme. What is it? Okay. There is a one scheme which was run by RBI called priority sector lending. In that priority sector lending, around 18% of the loans which are given by the banks, scheduled commercial bank. What are the scheduled commercial bank? We will discuss in the banking section, in the monetary section, money section. Okay. Around 18% loan should be given to the agri. We'll discuss is what is it, why it is. Okay? And then the last topic is the food and nutrition. Hunger. Okay. One important topic. Poverty. Poverty leads to hunger. Hunger lead to the poverty. Okay. So food and nutrition. For, for providing food and nutrition, what are the mechanism which are running in the India? Like National Food Security Act of 2013. PDS scheme, public distribution scheme. We have to learn about. Okay. This is our men's syllabus. I hope. I hope the syllabus is clear to you and now we are going to discuss 
which book you should refer for the dealing with the syllabus okay there are books like ncert books indian economic development of the class 11 you can go through it very simple and the uh, this this book is written in a very lucid manner like a story like book you can refer it you can refer the indian introductory macroeconomics the concept of macroeconomics are explained in this book okay you have to go through the you have to you must have to go through the ncrt book after reading the ncrt we have to pick one book for that book as a reference book and that book can be any of the two okay but you have to read you must have to read ncrt after the lecture okay you have to listen lecture you have to make notes about uh, out of it then you have to go to the ncrt you have to read, uh, read the particular section of the ncrt particular topic from that ncrt and then for certain value addition you have to go to any book any book whichever you like that can be the sanju verma indian the indian economy by sanju verma or that can be by indian economy by ramesh okay any book but for better understanding you can use this book okay for better understanding pick any one of two do not use two books at a time right what you have to do first you have to not listen actually you have to attend the lecture you have to attend the lecture okay after that during during that lecture you have to make notes okay read these notes first and then go to the ncrt read that particular topic from ncrt and if concept are not cleared or you want some extra information go to any book sanju verma or the ramesh Singh, whichever you like okay then not fearing you okay books till now it is clear to you so half of the part is done 50 percent work is done right now the remaining 50 percent is the most important work okay every aspirant does this okay those who get selected and not depends on the this 50 percent this remaining 50 percent so what is this remaining 50 percent analyzing pyq is the important thing previous year questions when we learn the when we analyze the previous year question we get to know about the depthness of that topic or how much we have to study about that topic we get this information from the previous year questions do for last five years and do it thoroughly do it thoroughly then the current affairs repo rate is increased is increased repo rate is decreased monetary policy committee is being held or meeting of monetary 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 policy committee committee is being held okay these are the news so we have to analyze it okay once you have covered in the statics that's enough just analyze the trend analyze the new new information new concept which are being uh, introduced in the day to day economic affair so we have to keep eye on that section then the one most important topic is the economic survey and the budget you have to go through this thing, these two things most of the current affairs of the economy are related to these things only most of the current affairs around 80 percent of the current affairs of the economy are being dealt in the economic survey and the budget so you have to revise read it thoroughly you have to make no, make note out of it okay? this is the approach and you have to follow it for the result what i have highlighted focus should be on the conceptual clarity one thing 
and that thing is economy you must have heard about it is a very dynamic subject okay everyone consider that it is a dynamic subject. okay it keeps evolving so what we have to focus we have to focus on the conceptual part and once your concept are done then go to the news analysis go to the different different do kahi data available hai okay you have to go to us but first of all your first priority should be conceptual clarity most of the out of 15 13 concept will be solved by conceptual clarity that's why i'm telling you the conceptual clarity most of now as i have promised you the starting of the lecture that i will analyze or i will discuss the trend of 2023 prelims examination of the mpsc rajya seva okay i have promised you in the uh, beginning of the lecture so it is for you okay total 15 question were asked in the prelims 2023 of the mpsc rajya seva the topics which were included for basics of economy around four questions were asked around four questions so the next lecture these are the next four five lecture are the most important lecture we have you have to keep eye on it okay then one three question were asked on the government schemes like different different schemes okay we will discuss those in the subsequent lecture so you have to focus the, on this part also then on the poverty on the poverty section two questions were asked so you have to keep the you have you have to have the conceptual clarity of the poverty part you have to keep some data data handy to you then banking there was a one question related to banking repo rate reverse repo rate on that there, there was one question and then union budget 2023 2024 jo kahi budget jhala hai to one question was asked and then 12th finance commission finance commission was in news so on that 12th finance commission now it is a 15th finance commission is uh, giving the report 12th finance commission one question was asked on the 12th finance commission and then one question asked on the gst goods and service tax one question was the miscellaneous question okay and then there were total 15 question which was asked in the mpsc rajya seva prelims 2020 so this is the trend analysis same trend around same trend was in the 2023 also 2022 also so we have to keep eye on this i consider that syllabus must have cleared to you okay and you have get some fruitful insight regarding your preparation regarding the economics from the next lecture onward we will start we will start the basics of economics till then bye bye okay enjoy